Next up is Monster legend Dennis Leamy, who won Heineken Cup medals with the province in 2006 and 2008. Dennis also talks about coming on board with the training team last year, the URC win, how the academy works, the patrons group, and also gives his thoughts on the Ireland versus New Zealand game on Saturday night. Leamy also talks about being forced to retire early and his time as a teenager working in Coolmore Stud. Last year and this year, you're, you're on the coaching staff with Graham. There, how has that been been going for you? Yeah, it's been it's been a, a real um, good experience. Uh, obviously, coming back to Munster, um, having been there as a player, yeah. So it's, it's it's been excellent, really, and a real journey. And we've had our ups and downs, but it's been a learning curve. But as a coaching group and a playing group and an organisation, I've really enjoyed being back around and. Um, yeah, it was great. Great last season. And obviously, you know, uh, finishing up with, with a trophy and silverware at the end of the season is great. But the journey along the way was really special too. Yeah, I did bring back some memories of back when you won the Heineken Cup back in 06, 08. Yeah, it did. It like, you know, I think there was, um, I suppose, backs against the wall at times uh, last year. You know, big games, big pressure. Had to go to tough places and win, you know. Ulster at Christmas time comes to mind, um, you know, and obviously that run that took us to the final and ultimately winning the final, um, that was fantastic. And it wasn't easy, and it was pressure all along the way. But when you look back, you take huge pride in what we did, and um, as I say, it was uh, it was an enjoyable in a sick kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Did it the monster way that people are saying? Yeah, exactly. I think we did it the hard way, and and certainly, you know, we were on the road, and we were, you know, the the, the term we was using all the time was battle hardened, and uh, you know, boy, was you right? Yeah, and back to pre-season the last couple of weeks. How has that been going? Yeah, it's been interesting. Obviously, you know, um, we have uh, about. 10 or 11 players away with uh, with the World Cup ongoing so we've got a you know a, a great um, ability to bring in younger players now and get a sense of how they're tracking you know we brought in a lot of young players and um, some of them played actually against the Babas the other day guys like Brian Leeson and, and Shane McCarthy they've come in and it's allowed us to have get a great handle on, how, on where they are and you know how good those guys are so there's been a big influx of academy players and that's been very exciting just judging them gauging them what they need to improve and the areas that they need to improve in <clears throat> and um, that's been hugely exciting. It's been tough, you know. We've asked the boys to to go up another level. We've really, really um, challenged them in terms of their fitness and their ability to play under pressure, developing their skills, you know, both sides of the ball, defence and attack, um, and challenging them consistently, but in a very fair manner and, and a, I suppose, uh, a very empathetic manner as well. And you know, I think we're getting the best out of guys, and that's really important. So, Dennis, the the academy. Could you just uh, break down exactly what that is? Kind of how many. Uh, lads will be involved in that and what kind of age group are our lads uh, that, that, that go through the academy? So roughly uh, our players our players will be coming from a, a wide geographical area obviously we have we've players coming from Cork, uh, Clare, Limerick, Tipperary, Waterford and they're spread right throughout the province so their idea that you know, a young a young age, roughly around 15 and 16, our CCROs, you know, yeah. spot them and, and we start to put them through, you know, different systems. Uh, some guys come through the youth system, some guys come through the schoolboy system. And ultimately, the, the cream essentially starts to rise to the top. And by the time they're about 18, 18 and a half, you know, we start to identify the boys that possibly could have a career in rugby and we bring them into the academy and um, in a, in a three-year structure, uh, first year, second year, and third year. Um, and ultimately, you know, we, we try and bring them through that process and get them in with the seniors as soon as we can. So they work within their own tight group, but uh, we try to expose them to the senior training as quickly as we, we feel they're ready. So are they um, physically ready to come in with us? You know, are they showing that they, they can, you know, live with the intensity of our training? But the key thing for us is to get them in as quickly as we can once they're, they're they're physically ready, and then you know you develop them from there. And and sometimes they'll 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 go back into their little academy unit. But we the the, the formula that Wig and Ian Costello have designed and and Gar Prendergast is uh, very inclusive, and it goes you know probably with academy players and and uh, senior players. It's up around 60 players and. Um, okay. Developing academy players within the senior structures is, is is a really good formula, we believe. Yeah, and so like, would a lot of the a lot of the fellas in the academy still be going to college at the same time, and then they? Yeah, it's a big thing. It's a big thing for us that we we I suppose develop a, a dual 
work focus in terms of um, you know on field and off field and be pre prepared for for life after rugby or even life during rugby in terms of you know um, developing the the player in a rounded way and uh, we're very very big on players getting some sort of piece of paper into their back po pocket whether whether it's a a trade like someone like who John Hodden is a qualified teacher but he's also very interested in um, in carpentry for example so it it doesn't always have to be academical it can be um, true trades and stuff like that but we try and focus on on the player and give him give him um, time to develop that away from the pitch so it's not all about rugby and it's not all the eggs aren't in one basket and when the time comes whether it's through your own decision to retire or, or, or like myself it was taken away quite early um, it doesn't come too much of a shock in terms of keeping the bills paid yeah and uh, t tell me so uh, is, are, are the lads then up in the center of excellence in limerick the whole time does academy players yeah, we try to bring them, we, the academy or with us in Limerick uh, on site. Um, you know, uh, you know, five days a week. They're 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 working with their own um, SNCs, but they're also working in tandem with, with our senior SNCs and and obviously rugby coaches. So, so we're very aligned, and that's the great thing at the moment. It's very aligned from top to bottom, and uh, I suppose the academy players are getting an exposure to the senior coaches that possibly they wouldn't have gotten before. And 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 we believe it's 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 a good model for us. It's. Um, it's to the way that we want to develop players. Look, there's other models out there, and I'm sure they're very successful for, for other teams and other um, environments. But this this is the monster model. It's unique, and we believe it works for us. Yeah, we just speak to touch on that. The, the monster model, the monster way. It's very much community uh, driven uh, club, and for the for academy players to make that step up must be extra special. Then to see that. Uh, actually materialize yeah it's great i mean <clears throat> against the barbarians we had i think uh, seven or eight academy players involved i think of the 23 players that took the field for monster i think 21 of them were from monster you know came through our 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 systems and our model and that's pretty special you know in, in terms of we want monster men and monster jerseys and look there's always room for for you know the guy that we pick up and bring in but um you know to, to have you know 2021 players born and bred and, and coming through our school systems our clubs to systems through our nts through our academy on into senior players that means a lot and and and, and it means you know you never want to diminish what foreign players have brought to munster but yeah. certainly i think you know being from the province um representing you know where you're from your county you know everything that goes with that that is that is something that's definitely important and uh you know i think it's it's brought us to to, to levels before that, were, that maybe we surpassed you know um our talents if you like you yeah. yeah, know we were you know the sum of our parts are were, were, were greater you know and uh that's the way we look at it anyway for you personally, was the transition from, I know you, you had to retire due to injury and then you got into coaching, was the transition easier because you had to, you had to stop because of injury or, and how, how have you found it? I know, it was terrible to be honest with you, really, um, like I just signed a two-year contract with the IRFU and um, it was just, I'd come back from the World Cup and I just actually signed, the day I landed, I signed a contract for another two years, so that was really good, but it, it became pretty clear very quickly that my um, that my hip was was um, in trouble and I'd, I'd, I'd gotten a knock at the World Cup, which had really flared it up. And um, yeah, from there, from there, it kind of spiralled out of control and, and within a few months I, I, I wasn't a rugby player anymore and that's pretty pretty hard hitting you know you go from being involved in a World Cup to suddenly a year later or even less ten months later you're out of the game um, you know trying to find your way so ultimately I lived in Cork for you know 12 years I decided to move home um, I'm from a farming background so I started it you know use that as my uh, reason to get out of bed and um, then I started to coach as well along with that so it's been a journey starting off with junior clubs and uh, you know school by rugby and Rockwell and on up into you know uh, an opportunity with Leinster working with their academy and then obviously working with their senior team after a couple of years and then I got, got the call from Munster so it's been a very interesting um, 10 years and uh, you know if the next 10 years are as exciting it'd be brilliant. <laughs> 
Can you, did you have to get a, a replaced eventually, the hip replaced? Yeah, I got it replaced um, a couple of years after I retired. I kind of, I tried to rehab, and but it wasn't working. And um, ultimately, I was in too much pain. It wasn't so much about even playing rugby, it was just the pain factor. So I decided to... Um, to to to, to um, get it replaced and it was very successful and I'm out of pain and oh, pretty good yeah 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 pretty good fantastic. yeah uh, so the dinner tomorrow night I don't know where you at the dinner were you at the dinners before because I was I was at the, the 18 one and there was all the the lads who won the of course Heineken Cup with you back in the day Ronan and uh, Donica was here it was a great kind of a, it was almost like. A, T- looking back to like a ten-year, twelve-year anniversary, uh, so you didn't, you weren't here. So you're what? No, I, I, I was all set to go, and I had to pull out. I had a very good reason. My, uh, my, my twins, Bobby and Bobby and Ada, were born that week, and I remember ringing up Anthony Morrissey and said, "I don't think I'm going to be able to go here." And he was, "What do you mean? I can't, you can't go?" And I said, "Well, I, I've uh, two little ones on the way. I hope that's a good enough excuse." So. Yeah, no, he was he was sound about it, but yeah, they arrived that that weekend, so I had to. Yeah, I was needed. I was needed at home, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it was a. It sounded like a, a brilliant occasion, and uh, all the pictures and all the crack coming back on the WhatsApp group. I was uh, very envious. So I'm looking forward to to, to this week. I'm sure there'll be more of the same tomorrow night. And in terms of like the the, the fundraising side of it, the Friends of Munster organise it. Uh, and we spoke about the academy a second ago and the importance of you. So how important is the dinner for Munster and making that connection to to Irish Americans in New York and around America? Yeah, I think it's hugely important. We talk about our fans and our, um, you know, the people from Munster and people who who support us, and we're very very aware of that. And it's hugely important. It's not made up, and I think that's a big thing. When wherever we are, whether we're in at home in Torman Park or whether we're in South Africa, you know, um, you know, in those sort of dog fights, we reference that that fan base, the people around the world, the diaspora, you know, people supporting us, and I think it it it, it gives us a, a little cause that we go after, and it, that we represent and who we represent, and occasions like tomorrow night are really important for us, just to get out and meet the people and and to tell people look. We, we appreciate the support so much, you know, it's not easy and people go out of their way, they give up their time and their money and, and you know, we really, really appreciate it and it means an awful lot to us. Uh, so then it's the, the, the Patrons Future Programme has been uh, a very important endeavour into, into developing the future talent. Can you t- touch on that? Uh, do you, can you touch on that for a moment? Yeah, it's hugely important, obviously, to, to allow us to bring in the best talent and um, to allow us to give those, those boys the best exposure we can. And, and, you know, that sort of investment in their future is hugely important. And um, it, it allows us to bring in more players to expose them to the level of rugby that we want to expose them. You take a guy like Shane McCarthy, for example, uh, how much he's improved in the environment. Look, he, when we saw him first, you know, he was a young guy with loads of talent, um, hadn't played on, on Munster underage teams, you know, was kind of in the background a little bit. You know, somebody saw something in him and said, um, look, Ian Costello, you need to get a look at this guy. Ian started watching him with, with the academy um, EPDOs and they decided to bring him in and he's just flourished. And, and without the, the patrons... Uh, dedication and, and um, investment in that, we may never see Shane McCarthy. Right now, we feel he's a guy that we can contract, and who knows? Yeah, um, yeah. just shows you how how important it is. Oh, it's hugely important. It really is, and and we're, I think we're we're within our system, our development system, we're going to have guys that are going to be that little bit older coming in as well, because um, in terms of playing ages and stuff, maybe. Can, compared to their counterpart in other provinces, they have a lower um, playing age. So, you know, we're willing to bring guys in at 20, 21, 22, and that's where that investment is hugely important um, to, to how we develop those sort of players. So uh, it's, it's, we're on the crest of a wave at the moment with the Irish team. Uh, how, how, how have you been enjoying it so far? What are your thoughts on how, how the, the team have been getting on? Yeah, very, look, very enjoyable. I think the boys have been very clinical in what they've done and... Um, Look, they look really well organised. They're obviously like every team there. You, they're physically fit. They're 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 good to go. But how how clinical they've been, you know, um, and and how they've gone about their business have been really impressive. Obviously, against the world champions the last night out, it was always going to be a real battle. And how they stood up physically, 
and um, won a very uh, a very tough game physically, but also they're smarts, you know, they're rugby smarts, you know, how they manipulated uh, South Africa and how they, they worked through difficult patches was really uh, impressive. And I think, you know, look, we have a big game against Scotland coming up now. You know, you can't take your eye off them. Scotland are genuinely a threat. Um, but you'd imagine with people like Andy Farrell, Paul O'Connell, John Fogarty, Simon Easterby, these guys have been there, they've done it, they've played in World Cups, you know the pressure, the, the pressure cooker it is, so um, you feel that they're in good hands and they'll be pointed in the right way. How big of an achievement do you think it would be if we were to get over the finish line? Like, like beat rugby is you probably you're competing with other sports compared to other other nations, uh, and then to have a team that's number one in the world and really fighting to be world champions would obviously be a massive, massive achievement. Huge, yeah, huge. And I think, look, the first thing is like um, we've never gotten to a semi final, so we have to kind of quantify it a little bit in terms of. Um, what would success look like? I know everyone talks about winning sil silverware, but there's another eight countries talking like that as well. I think for us, you know, getting to a quarter final, <clears throat> it's likely to be the All Blacks. You know, that's a that's a massive challenge as well. And you know, to to to, to win a quarter final would be an am amazing achievement. And then look after that, you wouldn't back against them. But actually, to get there first. I think that's the challenge, you know, let's get to that quarterfinal. Can we beat the Blacks? Because they're not looking too bad either. I mean, people people kind of writing this all-black team off as, 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 as not being like their predecessors, but that doesn't take from the fact that they're really, really good. So um, if we could get to a semi, yeah, it would be an amazing achievement. And then you just wouldn't write us off from there, would you? It's just lifting the whole nation, isn't it? And for for rugby at the ground level and the ground for the kids growing up, it must be must be fantastic. Yeah, it's hugely important. I my little one started playing rugby. I've three of them there, and um, yeah, it's just amazing. To, from I come from Cashel and Tipperary, which is a rural community, but to see the the turnout for minis on a Sunday, it's uh, it's incredible. Like there's hundreds of kids running around the place of all ages. They seem like they're they're barely able to walk and they're out. Uh, <laughs> They're out playing, so yeah, that just gives everyone a lift, and it puts it puts uh, rugby, you know, in the forefront of people's minds, which is important. Like, obviously, you know, we're a great sporting country, and you know, there's GAA and there's soccer and there's basketball and so many different, um, I suppose, sports that you can play. Um, you know, from a rugby point of view, and being a rugby man, you want to get as many young kids playing rugby and uh, to keep our team strong. Did you play any other sports when you were younger? Yeah, look, I, where I come from, it's hurling and, 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 and it's, it's definitely hurling and football. Yeah, and we love our dogs and our, and our horses as well. But um, I, was, I, I worked in Coolmore and Belly Dial growing up and uh, yeah, the horses are never too far away. So um, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, um, I played a lot of Gaelic games growing up, which I think ultimately helped me as well in terms of uh, being a rugby player too, to kind of... Yeah, there's, st there's stuff that you can take from all those codes that, that kind of help you. Yeah. Do you still follow the horse racing? Uh, not as much, no. I, I follow the hurling a lot, oh, uh, yeah. more so uh, the tip teams and the tip yeah. championship. But um, no, not so much the horses. Yeah. I, although I, I, uh, I would, if, if it was on, I'd sit down and watch yeah, it. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Dennis, you were saying that when you were younger, you did a, did a stint in Coolmore. T tell me about that. Yeah, um, back in the day, I think yeah, it was a great form of pre-season training. So... <laughs> Well, I used to work with a with a crowd called Farm Relief, and they used to sublet us out to uh, to cool more, cool more. So yeah, we used to basically fill their barns with hay. So we'd go from uh, yard to yard, and basically, I don't know how big Cool Moor is, but it it seemed massive then, and it's probably a bit bigger now. But they'd put us into mini buses, and they'd bring us into a yard, and uh, we'd stay there, and the the the. The, the trucks would come in with the hay and we'd fill up the barns and then we'd jump into the minibus and head to the next yard and it was a, a fantastic um, I suppose experience in terms of hard work and, and meeting deadlines and uh, yeah it was brilliant it was brilliant uh, I suppose pre-season training uh, in many ways as well but it's tough it was tough it, uh, I suppose for me what it gave me was a grounding in terms of uh, I think a better uh, keep dedicating myself to something that I can uh, yeah. get away from <laughs> doing such hard work. Yeah. Was that the late 90s, was it? It would have been the late 90s, yeah. It would have been, um, yeah, exactly, 98, 99, um, right. those years. Uh, but, yeah, it was fabulous. And just to see a, a huge sporting organisation and obviously the bloodlines that they produce and uh, in many ways that we were working in their academy at the time. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Brilliant.